A home always shows how a person is. Grandma's house full of dollies, pictures of the family, ceramic figurines, very simple and cozy, and smells of baked goodies. The average American has wall-to-wall -wall carpet, every single piece of furniture is well planned and matching. The house is equipped with all the latest zip zap whim wham goodies with the main idea to live in luxury with the least effort. The husband goes and works hard all day for his family and his property and comes home to a wife who is upset because the kids didn't do what she wanted them to do. Our farmhouse is a good one to describe for our home. The farmhouse is located on the dirt road a ways down from the boardwalk in George's house. The only traffic was on weekends when the horses were rented out. On the back side of the house was a slight drop where the creek ran by. The house had been made of rocks. There was a fireplace inside and the living room was blocked off from the front door and passageways by hanging striped tapestries. The ceiling had large and billowing flowered pastel tapestries whose fringe outlined the roof's covering. Our furniture was four couches arranged in a large semicircle, and directly below them were mattresses. The couches sat low, which left you in a half lying, half sitting position in the center of the semicircle. In the center of the semicircle was a mirrored table. On it sat our hookah pipe with three hoses. Behind that was the fireplace. The couches and mattresses were also covered with tapestries. The mantelpiece was decorated with pretty pieces of nature one of us may have found on the ground, and an old vase, a container full of embroidery thread, a zuzu tray, and whatever else placed up there to look at. The whole effect of the living room was that of an Arabian tent. The siddhar, the bura, and tablas all added to the setting. Outside this tent was a completely different world. There were two bedrooms. One was set down further than the rest of the house. It was nothing but one big mattress. We would jump into the room and roll around and do tumbling. This is where most of us slept. I say most of us because generally there would be someone who didn't want to sleep with everybody, mainly due to the fact that they were new to the family. Actually, it's lots of fun to sleep with lots of people and make love in large numbers too. For the new people, the other bedroom was made into a shy room. It had one bed and a large window that you could see the mountains and the creek from. There's a group of trees outside the window that I used to sit and marvel at. So beautiful, real and proud. Pasteled curtains and lots of lace were around the window. The main function of this room was to hold our clothes. We seemed to have gathered clothes from every era and every size. There were patchwork farm dresses, Princess shirts and satin pants, full length gowns, court jester shirts, meditation robes, baggy jeans, t shirts, cowboy shirts, straight clothes for the straight world, hats, tights, scarves, and oodles of other goodies. You could go into that room and trip for a long time on who or what you wanted to be that day. Our kitchen had a large window that could be used as a short order cook window. The kitchen was rather small in size with an electric range that seldom worked, a refrigerator that was always defrosting, and sinks that had pails underneath to collect the water. With the help of portable hot plates and lots of tender loving care, our meals turned out to be stupendous banquets fit for a king. Our water came through a pump and sometimes came through a line of body power carrying pails from the well. The bathrooms had the usual toilet and sink, and it was very common to see the bathtub with a couple of giggling elves in it. The more fun we began to have, the less we felt like thinking people, so we became magic elves. There is no shame amongst the family. A body is a body. If you feel your body's not perfect, you, in some way, made it that way by your opinion of yourself. Change your opinion and admit you're perfect and beautiful. The results are most satisfactory. The day is coming soon when all will have to judge themselves. Are you ready? We use this house to get acquainted with ourselves, to realize that everyone has the same hang-ups. These hang-ups were merely thoughts that amounted to nothing. Doing things for others? For the pure satisfaction of doing it, not caring whether others happen to notice it's been done or not, helps one to forget his own petty thoughts and become more tuned in to the universal mind. Rather than a task being a chore, 
It's a chance for you to express your love. Take your time. Put all your attention and imagination in everything you do. Say to yourself, I'm doing this for me. I will do this as nicely as if I would want it done for me. Don't be afraid of making a mistake, for there's no such thing. Everything happens for a purpose, mainly just so your soul can experience different situations. Souls and ever-changing, constant at now. Tune into your soul. Break the shield of ego. Feel the contented being, which is the real you. Now is forever. Now is everything at once. Do more for others for your own satisfaction. Soon, you will want to do everything for others because the better you will feel. Watch yourself become selfish in doing things for others. You'll see it's really for you. The love you have inside of you, it's your own love. You can't possess love. You let, it possesses you. Others can see your love, but they cannot capture it. They must submit to their own love inside of them. It's the same love. Why cut your love off for only certain individuals and things when you can love the whole world? Do what makes you feel good inside. You'll only be let down if you do things for another, expecting their approval and praise. Give yourself the approval and praise. You can never run from yourself. You may try hard, but soon you will be forced to see yourself. You needn't make excuses for your actions to another human. You do what you do, because that's what you do. The same is true for everyone. No one can belong to another. You belong to yourself. As you begin to see these things, you begin to love all mankind and everything. You realize that you're the same life a spider is, a leaf is, the earth is, the sun is, the moon is, pure energy existing in a dream together. It seems the beautiful dream of God's imagination has turned into a temporary nightmare. A change is coming where, once again, Love will be the ruler of the earth. Peace will be the weapon. Faith will be the bondage and truth will be the word. Stay tuned in. Love be.